Today is June 20, 2016, and welcome to the 13th edition of Mavro News Channel. I'm Mark. Join me as we check the latest stories from our MMM Global Community. Our events roundup story this week will be about a new MMM office in Turkey, two pocket meetings in India, and a Mavro mission in the Philippines. While in our MMM Gives Back, we will have two events from the Republic of South Africa and the Philippines where guiders have to travel far just to do their good deeds. Venture capitalist Tim Draper's prediction about Bitcoin price will be our future. While in his Just an Opinion, guider Emil talks about which option is better to use in MMM, Bitcoin or bank. And last, our advisory warns of a fraudulent claim about the launch of a new Republic of Bitcoin. We begin our roundup this week in Turkey as another MMM office opened last May 28 at the large working class district of Umrani in Istanbul. Through the efforts of 1K Guider, I quote Arda, this will be the third office established on the European part of Istanbul. Guider, I quote, is happy as this will provide a meeting place for people in the area who are interested to know more about the MMM community. He says he'd be more than happy to answer questions and provide assistance to those who wish to visit the new MMM office. Our next stop is MMM India, where two pocket meetings took place. 100 Guider of Vinesh Gupta organized the first event last June 10 at Jabalpur in the state of Madhya Pradesh. Many guests, participants and guiders from Jabalpur area participated. They talk about MMM and its ideology first. Then they proceeded to discussing 3% bonus to providing help in INR, the 10% letter of happiness bonus, and the positive aspects of the 30-day freeze for Mavros. The following day, Gaider Sashikan Patil had his MMM Pioneer Pocket Meeting at Kini. The history of MMM and how MMM India developed was discussed first. Then they proceeded to topics like the mechanics of the weekly lottery and the kind of bonuses that a participant may get. Organizers also encourage the attendees to continuously promote MMM India in social media. Our last event is from the Philippines as guiders Catherine Aquino, Marvin C. and their team conducted a four-day Mavro mission in Puerto Princesa, a coastal city in the island province of Palawan. Their first day was on May 19, 2016, where they had table meeting attended by a few guiders, active members and aspiring participants. Plans for the next day charity event were also discussed. The second day was a day-long charity event where they had a feeding program, environmental awareness talk and a coloring activity for the indigenous people group called Batak in the mountain of Sicho, Kalakwasan, Barangay, Tanabag. On May 21, 2016, day 3 was at Nara, Palawan. The offline event started at 4 p.m. with 25 attendees. MMM flyers and MMM fans were distributed to those who registered. Guider Catherine talked about the MMM community and its program, Like the Leap, while Guider Marvin discussed some information pertaining to the MMM community, including its ideology, how it works, and its benefits. Then Guider Janal discussed about Bitcoins. The last day began in the early morning of May 22 with the continuation of the training about MMM personal office. There were around 25 attendees who gladly participated in the discussion. The four-day Palawan Mavro mission was a success, as they ended up with 15 new registered participants who made their donations. Some other attendees also expressed interest in joining the MMM community a few days after the event. Our featured MMM Gives Back stories this week have one thing in common. Our dedicated organizers have to travel far so they can extend the help from the MMM community. From MMM Republic of South Africa, Guiders Werner Hatting, Ed Sarjavert, Martin Leslie, Armando Van Wyk, and Thea Wiegand had to travel almost a thousand kilometers from Johannesburg to Eastern Cape so they can hand out 300 personalized MMM blankets to the Chiwulani community in the area of Mapende. This project took months of planning and donation gathering from the MMM community before the team of five guiders finally made it happen last May 14 of this year. Drawing inspiration from the happy faces of the recipients, 
the team said they will continue doing MMM activities that focus on helping other people no matter how far they are. Our last MMM gives back stories from the Philippines. The Batak is the smallest among the different groups of indigenous people in the island province of Palawan. Their tribe is also slowly disintegrating. From a population of around 600 in the early 1900, it is estimated that they are now down to just around 200. From Puerto Princesa City proper, the team traveled two hours using a van to the Batak Community Center. From there, they began a two-hour trek to their destination that will cross 11 rivers while they carry all the grocery items and materials they brought for the charity event. Luckily, after crossing one river, a 10-wheeler truck going to a quarry site gave them a free ride and saved them from crossing three rivers. They also had to stop twice along the way. The first was due to the rain and the second was they had to eat their pack lunch. Upon arrival, the team immediately started to prepare the food for their feeding program and also set up the materials that they will use for the other activities. They did the discussion about environmental conservation first, then the coloring activities for the kids followed next. Games were also done, which the kids enjoyed so much, and they were given sweets as prizes. The last part was the feeding program, where about 150 attendees were served with hot macaroni soup, bread, and juice. Some members of the team went to several huts to give them their shares as they were not able to go to the venue because of the rain. For the past years, Bitcoin enthusiasts, investors and experts have tried to predict where the price of Bitcoin will be a few years after. Most of them have failed miserably though because unlike fiat currency and other financial assets, Bitcoin is traded on the free market and is exposed to many different influences. This makes it almost impossible for anyone to correctly predict the price of any given time. But none of that kept venture capitalist Tim Draper from giving his own take. In his September 2014 interview with Liz Kleiman of Fox Business News, he said that he is looking at a $10,000 Bitcoin in a three-year time period. About Bitcoin. Did Alibaba and the lead up to this massive IPO steal the thunder from Bitcoin, which has been growing pretty exponentially? Yeah, uh, well, no, I don't think so. Alibaba did sort of take all the air out of the room. But, uh, but Bitcoin, uh, I, I'm still predicting Bitcoin, $10,000 per Bitcoin in three years. It, um, it's, it's a hedge against a lot of uh, fiat currencies. It's a... It's a a new way of transferring cash uh, through throughout the world in a much more efficient way, and uh, and Bitcoin has created a whole infrastructure of many many companies, some of which uh, came out of Boost, the the incubator. Mm -hmm. Very bold statement, you may say, but Tim is no stranger to treading uncharted territories. Some even call him the Nostradamus of the markets, with the Midas touch of being well ahead of the game. He is the founder of the firm Draper Fisher Jerbetson, which has invested in a number of high-profile companies like Twitter, Tesla, Tumblr, and SpaceX. He is also known to the Bitcoin community as he was the buyer of the 29,000 Silk Road Bitcoins that were put up for auction by United States Marshal Service for about $18 million. It's almost two years now since he made the pronouncement. Bitcoin rate is now testing the $700 mark. Should his prediction happen next year? Do you have enough Bitcoin saved? Hi everyone, my name is Emil and welcome to another segment of Just My Opinion. Which payment option is best? Is it Bitcoin or is it the bank? I know there's a lot of other cryptocurrencies out there which can be used as comparison to banks. But I choose Bitcoin since it is the most popular. As of today, a lot of MMM participants are still wondering which mode of payment is best when participating in MMM. I believe that every person who joins MMM needs to know what are the advantages and disadvantages of both mode of payments. I noticed that in MMM, people who join have, have different uh, beliefs and preferences. And that includes which mode of payment to use. Many are still 
uh, confident of using banks when making their pH or provide help, but we can deny the fact that there are also growing numbers of participants who prefer using Bitcoin instead. I don't intend to change your preferences, but I am here to say what I know so that it will help you decide. First, let's talk about convenience. When you make a request for provide help in MMM, sometimes you will be assigned with multiple number of participants. Sometimes it's two, three, four, and so on. I had an experience before providing 2,000 Philippine, uh, Philippine pesos and 10 participants was assigned to me. And I was like, man, I can't finish it in 36 hours. That's a lot. So I realized that when it comes to convenience, Bitcoin technology is like a handy tool. In scenario like this, using bank as an option means that if you are assigned to 20 participants, that means you will be needing to fill up 20 deposit slips or you have to enter the bank 20 times. That will consume so much of your time, right? Some will say, well, I can just use my online bank transfer to do that. That's true. However, what if your recipient's bank account is different from yours? See, if you are using Bitcoin, all you need to do is just a few clicks and you're done. No need to go outside and wait on the line. Next, let's talk about security. Through decades, banks had already proved their strength in terms of security. Before a bank account is created, a person needs to submit several documents to prove his identity. Contrary to Bitcoin, which only needs an email address and a computer, thus making the account or the account holder totally anonymous. Plus, the standard Bitcoin wallet doesn't have limits in terms uh, of transferring funds, unlike the bank. You heard some stories of Bitcoin wallet being hacked, right? And when it happens, it is hard to trace where the funds will go because of Bitcoin anonymity. I'm not sure, but the act of being anonymous in Bitcoin is actually both strength and weakness. Plus, the standard Bitcoin wallet doesn't have limits in terms of transferring funds, unlike the bank. You heard some stories of Bitcoin wallet being hacked, right? And when it happens, it is hard to trace where the funds will go because of Bitcoin anonymity. I'm not sure, but the act of being anonymous in Bitcoin is actually both strength and weakness depending on how it is used. I'm not saying that Bitcoin is not secured. In fact, if you know how to set high quality passwords and two-factor authentic uh, authentication, you can prevent intruders. Some people also use cold storage wallets like a hard drive or a paper wallet to store their Bitcoins. On the other hand, banks are using several ways to secure money. Most banks corporation follow what we call anti-money laundering law which prevents an authorized withdrawal of big amount of money from your bank account. So, in terms of security, we can say both had their flaws and perfection. Now, let's talk about the accuracy. As a MMM participant, we all want to make sure that we receive the exact amount, uh, the exact amount when we perform PH or GH requests. When you use bank account in MMM, whether you are the sender or the receiver, accurate amount is achievable. With Bitcoin, it sometimes changed because of the value that alters every second. Sometimes you, guess, uh, or sometimes you get less of what you requested, sometimes you get more. It is because Bitcoin depends only on the supply and demand, meaning it can go up or go down any moment. Generally, Bitcoin price tends to go up, but sometimes you will experience that its value will have a significant drop. Sometimes it will only take hours for the value to go down several hundred dollars. So, if you are a person who prefers accurate amount, most of the time you may opt for the bank. But if you are the type of person who wants to take chance on the price of fluctuation, maybe you will use Bitcoin. Again, 
it will depend on how you will use it. Another is about decentralization. We know that in MMM, participants exchange donations and they send their money directly and we call it peer-to-peer. -peer. The same concept goes with Bitcoin. It, it is not bound by any region or government and Bitcoin itself exists in millions of computers maintained by the users and miners. This also means that since it's decentralized, government will not be able to interfere with its operation. During the past years, we all know that one factor that contributed in the failure of MMM 1994 was the intervention of the big banks in the government of Russia. The history repeated itself when MMM Republic of South Africa experienced a restart recently. Some members said that the major costs were actually this or those banks and the government. Some members said that the major costs were actually the banks and the government. Bank accounts of those people who involved in MMM RSA were frozen, which, ulti which ultimately uh, lead to panic. So I think if people want MMM to be totally decentralized, they will opt to use Bitcoin instead. Lastly, if you are going to review MMM ideology, which was created by Mavrodi, you can see that he is not in favor of how banks are manipulating the monetary system. In fact, a lot of original MMM videos will tell you that banks uses fiat currency to enslave people. Hmm, maybe Mabrodi is not against the bank itself, I think. Uh, what I think is that he's against those people who wanted to control the banking system. He's against these people because they are using the banks for their own benefit. What do you think? Should you switch to Bitcoin instead? Well, here's my opinion. Banks are already a part of the entire world's financial system. Most of the daily transaction still involves the use of banks. However, in MMM, what I see is that using Bitcoin is more applicable. It will help you save more time and effort, plus the power of decentralization. And since Bitcoin price is more likely to go up, the opportunity to earn additional income is also big. Actually, it is predicted that the price of Bitcoin can go as high as $10,000 by 2018, which is really opposite compared to the currency or to the fiat currency like dollars that loses its value every single year. But still, the decision is yours. Before you decide to switch from bank to Bitcoin, do your own research first. I think it would not take you a day to learn this emerging technology about cryptocurrency. Who knows? Bitcoin might be the next fortune that you're searching. That's it for this week. See you again next week for a more interesting topic. Just always remember that everything that I said in this video is just my opinion. Have a great day and bye-bye. Last week, two people previously associated with MMM administration have posted announcement about the launch of the new Republic of Bitcoin and MMM structure with a claim that they have approval from our founder, Sergey Mavrodi. Our MMM administration would like to clarify that such claim is fraudulent and without the go signal of our founder. If you have seen such posts or have received invitation to participate, Please be warned that MMM has not launched any new republic of Bitcoin and does not plan to launch any at all. That caps our edition for this week. Allow me to leave you a quote from the NBA superstar Michael Jordan as we face challenges in moving forward after some setbacks in our MMM community. Remember that obstacles don't have to stop you. If you run into a wall, don't turn around and give up. Figure out how to climb it, go through it, or work around it. I am Mark, and I bid you a great week ahead. Always remember, together we change the world.